Hi, my name is Rich Harrington from Creative Cow, and today I'd like to show you the interaction of Photoshop and After Effects when it comes to 3D models. We can use Photoshop to retexture a model and then bring it in as a live 3D object into After Effects. Here's how. You see here I've got an object already dropped in and this is sort of the end result. We've gone ahead and remapped this and put on a book cover that we needed such as if we were doing a story on this or maybe doing a bumper broadcast graphic about this particular book and the authors. Let's go ahead and start from scratch. I'm going to choose File New and choose the video size that I need. So in this particular case we're doing a 1080 broadcast and I'll click OK. The next thing you'll do is choose 3D New Layer from 3D File. And this allows you to grab a 3D object. There's several file formats supported. You'll see 3D Studio, Collada, Google Earth, U3D, and Wavefront. We're just going to go ahead and navigate out to a 3D model. There we go. And open it. And it brings it in. In this particular case, it's a book. You see there it is. There's the 3D object. There's pages. There's a little bit of distortion. And we'll just position that how we want it to start. Now you can come up over here and use these useful tools to rotate and turn and that might be a little bit easier to you. As you roll over you'll see different control points that allow you to do things like roll, adjust the scale, that works great. Now when you're ready to change the textures it's pretty simple. Let's just go ahead and hit return there and I'm going to select in this case the top which is going to be the front texture and I double click and it opens. Now all I need to do is go get the texture. So in the case of a book, you might just ask the publisher for the book cover or scan it in if that was the case of what you needed to do. I'll just say file place and I'll go find that book cover texture. There we go. Got a PDF from the publisher. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And it brings in the whole thing in this case because it's actually larger than we need. And I'll just size that so it fits. Now the key here is to go ahead and let it distort a little bit so it matches the shape of the original model. So you may find as you start to place things that you have to do a little bit of scaling or distorting. I'm just going to take that in there. That looks pretty good. Adjust the scale there. There we go. Come on over and grab this handle. And I'm just going until I get right to the edge there. That looks good. Press return, close and save and you see it's mapped it to the front of the book. Now obviously the book looks a little distorted so while that's fresh in my mind I'll just adjust its vertical scale there. Looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and sort of rotate that around. There's the edge so we'll just select the side and open up that texture. File place Grab the same file, bring it in, zoom out a little bit here, and just distort until it fits. There we go. Scale that out. You might have to go pretty wide here. And you can always, after applying that, flatten the image and then just further scale as needed. I'm just going to make a smaller selection here and press Command T for free transform and finish scaling that out the rest of the way. Now that looks pretty distorted but when we close and save you notice that it maps just fine to that texture. And if you needed to tweak it there like it does look a little bit stretched I can go ahead and just double click there on the side, open that up, we'll simply duplicate that and on the background here in this case we'll just fill with black select all, fill, and transform this back just a little bit. There we go. Close, save, and notice it updates. So a very easy relationship there between the layers that are used for the texture of the 3D model and your live 3D texture. Let's just go ahead and spin that around to the back. We'll select the back, open it up, file place, Grab our texture map and just scale that down. 
I'm just holding down the shift and the option keys to scale towards the center. There we go. And scale that a little bit horizontally until we've mapped the correct surface. Press return, close, save, and it updates. So you see, very, very simple. Over here in Photoshop, you can continue to adjust the model, play with its position. You, of course, can come on over to the 3D workspace and see even greater controls for things like your lights. You can adjust the intensity of those lights. You know, there's the infinite light. But overall, I tend to do this pretty flat in Photoshop so I could tweak it more in After Effects. Let's just save this. We'll call this Book Cover. And when we jump on over to After Effects, so let's just bring the layers in. So if I double click and I navigate out to the book that I've made, I can go ahead and import that as composition. And in doing so, we'll just let that be a live Photoshop 3D file and it comes in. Open that up and what you will see is you've got your actual book, you've got your background and a control layer. Now, if you want the book itself to be affected by lights, for example, let's go ahead and add a ambient light here. And we'll set that back to white. And we'll take that intensity to about 70. You notice it did nothing. And it doesn't change until you actually make that a 3D layer. So when you make the light, and then you turn the object into a 3D layer, it could then accept lights. Remember, you can always twirl down and go to your material options to adjust how much of the ambient light is going to affect that, as well as if there's any specular highlights or the shininess of the material itself, how much it reflects back. If you want to control that object, just use the rotation property on the controller layer, and you see you can adjust the orientation as needed and this is a full 3D object, so it's got actual depth to it. It can cast shadows. You can move the camera around it in orbit and actually see it. And if at any point in time you need to, just select it, press Command E, and you are right back into Photoshop where you can treat Photoshop's 3D lights or the actual textures that you've mapped to the object. So a very cool interplay there between Photoshop and After Effects that opens up the world for using 3D objects as design elements. For Creative Kyle, my name's Rich Harrington. I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where there's tons more tutorials to check out as well as very helpful forums for both Photoshop and After Effects.